My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people make friends, just trying to make you a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and explain. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. March came in like a bull, not a lion, but I'm wondering if it'll go out like a bull too. I keep debating that because once again, we seem to have a setup that lines up positively, where we aren't fighting the Fed or the tape. That's how we could have still one more good day with Dow Vance 91 points. SP gained 0.81%. NASDAQ jumped 1.14%. We all have our idols, and one of mine was the legendary Marty Zweig. That's where I get the don't fight the Fed, don't fight the tape phrase. I wish you could have met this surprisingly humble man who taught a generation of people, including me, how to invest. He'd come on a show called Wall Street Week on Friday nights, spent some monumental investing wisdom, used to scribble it all down on a notepad. For example, when he said, don't fight the Fed, don't fight the tape, he meant that if the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, you had to be very careful. And you also had to be very careful about corporate earnings because they would bring out a lot of selling if the earnings were weak. And then you'd have to be doubly careful if you're fighting the Fed and the tape. Right now, with our most recent data, we have enough economic weakness so we clearly aren't fighting the Fed. They have no reason to tighten it for yesterday's personal consumption expenditures number. At the same time, after this past earnings season, we have enough positive firepower that the bulls aren't fighting the tape either. If anything, the tape's like a vast wave lifting all boats, even the leaky ones, like the financials, which could have been crushed by a horrendous report from New York Community Bank Corp, which disclosed an internal controls issue and announced a multi-billion dollar goodwill impairment change and a leadership change. A similar situation a year ago would have caused, well, a, a, let's just say a lot of banks would have gone down and we would have spent the whole weekend worried about who is next, right? Now, we should never let the New York Community Bank by signature, those were two ne'er-do-well banks, and it inherited signature's problems on top of its own. Now, this bank stock was down more than 25% today, yet the tape was so strong that it had minimal impact on the rest of the market. That's incredible. The negativity about this wouldn't, wouldn't spread like wildfire. But you know what? It tells me that there's good news out there. And so what we have to ask ourselves is, could the good news continue? Why don't we just go to our game plan from next week, which has plenty of fodder to test our Marty Zweig derived thesis. First, we know this has been a tech led rally, correct? And it's been two pronged. We have artificial intelligence and enterprise software. How about when you have a company like that does both? A company like GitLab, which offers a comprehensive AI platform for what's known as DevSecOps, or development, security, and operations, perhaps the hottest area in the entire software portion of the market. Come like this one is at the heart of the bull market. I think GitLab is going to crush it because it's in the sweet spot of the entire artificial intelligence revolution. Plus, they had the added advantage of being a very good company. Now, you may have heard late a tale today about possibly a Boeing buying Air Spirit Aerosystems. That's a supplier to them. And while I believe that could happen, I, I don't think it'll happen Monday, but it could happen. It would be very good for Boeing to reclaim the, what I call the fuselage. I think there's still some kinks to be worked out. Nonetheless, I think it could occur some point this week. And if it does, the entire airline industry and you, the customer, would be great beneficiaries. For, look for that news to break. Next, we are at the extreme tail end of earnings season now, and that means on Tuesday morning we're going to get the results from Target, the department store chain that's had several an uh, analysts raise their earnings estimates and price targets this week. Now, that's a very good sign, especially since the stock's beaten down. Currently sports a nearly 3% yield. That seems enticing to me. I like Walmart, Amazon, and Costco, which reports later in the week. And you know what? Target can put on a darn good show, too. Doesn't diminish the others. We also hear from another company that I've liked, and you know this, it's CrowdStrike. We have them on all the time. Now, they, this industry has come under a lot of pressure, right? It's a difficult moment for cybersecurity. I favor Palo Alto Networks, reported a disappointing quarter this time, now shifting its business model to more of a soup to nut security platform. CrowdStrike's a tough competitor to Palo Alto in the cloud. So we need to see if they're suffering from some of the same problems that Palo Alto is. At the same time, Today, we got a good quarter from Zscaler, or cybersecurity outfit focused on identity protection. It's not got clocked anyway. That doesn't bode well for CrowdStrike. But CEO George Kurtz has never missed a quarter. If I own this one for the travel trust, you know what I'd do? I'd hang in there because this industry is the hottest it's been in years. 
Wednesday brings more retail. Look at this, Foot Locker and Abercrombie. Whoa, contrast. Now, we own Foot Locker for the Chapel Trust. It hasn't been easy, but the stock's climbed out of a hole after a bad fall, and it's now more than doubled from its lows. We can't tell whether there's a turnaround at hand. Foot Locker blew up twice before turning. But I think the makeover is beginning to take hold. While I'm not pounding the table this one before the quarter, I'm not abandoning it either. People may realize it, but I, I, but not realize this. this. This is something I'm going to tell you that is just astounding. See this, Abercrombie and Fitch? This has become a serial beat and raise outfit that has become maybe the best in the entire world of retail. The best. After a period of neglect, Abercrombie is now very, very well run. I think it's a roll. Get this. By the way, this stock was at $29 only a year ago. It's at $131 now. And do you know it's still cheap? It sells at just 21 times the extra earnings estimates. That's incredible. It's a reminder, by the way, that many other groups besides tech work in this market. It's not all mag whatever. Campbell Soup reports on Wednesday morning, and it must be so boring to keep fielding questions about GLP-1 weight loss drugs. But after M- Melissa Lee's fascinating document, doc last night, how can you not worry about Campbell Soup earnings when they own a fair amount of junk food brands? You think Pepperidge Farm can put up consistently strong numbers in a world where people no longer crave cookies the way they used to? Thursday, we hear from Kroger for the first time after his attempt to merge with Albertsons has been challenged by the Federal Trade Commission in a suit that I do fear the government will win. I say fear because in reality, there's not much overlap between these uh, supermarket chains, but the FTC is especially wary uh, toward this deal because Albertsons has a bad track record with this stuff. While I hope Kroger can win on the merits, they're going to have to play litigation roulette. And as anyone in the club knows, we don't like stories where courts play a big role in our future. Oh, and if you want the contrast, Costco reports Thursday night. I really like what I see from this perennial charitable trust name. This past weekend, we told CBC Investing Club members at our annual meeting that Costco is a winner, even as it has a new CEO, and we'll have a new CFO in two weeks when the legendary Rich Galanti officially steps down. That will be a sad event. This culture's strong, though. The team is great. What else? When Dell reported last night, we heard that anything related to the storage and processing of AI data is on fire. That's why we own Broadcom for the Chapel Trust. And even after the stock 7.6% rally, I bet it's got more room to run. Marvell Technology ha- also has a role to play in the AI space. And I'm expanding that part of the bu- expecting that part of the business to do well, even as there are other parts of the semiconductor company that could be soft. So don't expect a blowout like I do expect from Broadcom. Finally, on Friday, we have the Friday employment report number, and uh, the Bulls want to see a slight boost in unemployed roles get toward 4% from 3 and change while wages stay steady. If we get that, then once again, we'll have another week where we won't be fighting the Fed. But the bottom line, you don't want to get complacent here. And after this run, it's real easy to fall into complacency, isn't it? But then again, complacency, or let's just call it a, how about a willingness to let it ride, has been paying pretty well, hasn't it? Dell stock has been going strong, and the next thing you know, it reports a stunning quarter anyway. And today, its stock is up 32%. Forget not biting the tape. Right now, we are absolutely loving it. How a pleasure. Let's go to KT in Massachusetts, please, KT. Hey, Jim, thank you for your hard work. We owe you big time. No, nah, you don't owe me anything. I'm just glad you watch. I mean it. You don't owe me anything. Thank you. You've helped me so much. You're a great teacher. Ah, thank you. That's what I Jimmy, aspire I to Jimmy, I own Morgan Stanley and Wells Fargo. One's at a 52-week high. The other's 15 points off. I'm thinking of taking one off the table. I'm thinking of selling Morgan Stanley and holding Wells. What do you think? Well, I like your attitude because you're selling a loser and, and you're not funding uh, a loser with Wells. Wells is the winner. We own Morgan Stanley. And I am now willing to say that we are extremely disappointed, extremely disappointed in the performance of Morgan Stanley for the Chapel Trust. It is a black mark on our performance, and it's driving me crazy. It does have a 4% yield that has kept me in there. I feel like a sucker. This is the time for that company to start delivering. Whew. All right, let's go to Walter, New Jersey, please. Walter. Blah, Jim, from the Garden State of New Jersey. Best well, you know, I love the Garden State. It's my home state. Yeah. Best corn What's up? and tomatoes in the country. Uh, my question to you is, Jim, is I retired as an investment banker about four years ago, and I wanted to put my money, a lot, I put a lot in growth stocks and fangs, but I put a lot in fixed income, specifically uh, the, the telecoms. AT&T, I bought about four, four points higher than this. 
It was trading at 39 in about 2019. It's trading at 16 now. Right. My question is twofold. What, what took it down, and how do we? How does it get back up? Okay, a- ATT uh, has been spending a fortune. It has to to maintain its network. It also made a couple of bad acquisitions. Then it did a demerger, and it doesn't have a good balance sheet, and it uh, cuts it, its dividend. Other than that, it's fine. I do like Verizon. I think that Verizon is doing better than I thought, and I do think that Hans Vestberg has started to really make a turn there. They got the cash flow. They've got a yield at 6.6 that I like. That's the one to buy. We're going to Sheila in Tennessee now. Sheila. Hi, Jim. So good to speak to you today. Oh, thank you, Sheila. What's going on? I want to thank you, first of all, for all your sage advice and for sharing all of that with us small investors. You make us better because you make us well-informed. Well, thank you. Remember, I was a small investor and still feel like that all the time, especially when all those billionaires come on and tell us we should be scared and don't want us to make any money. There's an interesting rap for you. Go ahead. Yes, it is interesting. And clearly, you prove all of them wrong. Um, I I just wanted to ask you a little bit about a stock I've been investigating uh, because I've been looking for some historically strong dividend yielding stocks. And I'm wondering what you think of NEE, NextEra. I see you, NextEra, and I raise you with Sempra. We had Jeff Martin on last night. I thought he told a terrific story. Same yield, much better growth play, and I think incredibly well run. All right. You don't want to get complacent. And after this run, it really is easy to be complacent. But remember, we're not fighting the tape and we're not fighting the Fed. So we are pretty much liking what we see on Man Money tonight. MRI and radiology com- company Radnet gave very strong guidance in the latest quarter. And I'm going to tell you, we're sitting with down with Radnet CEO, get the full story. Then I'm turning my homework on one produce related name, and all I can tell you is holy guacamole. There's a lot done back there. And I'm getting a read on all things grocery and food wholesale, including your food inflation to supermarket with the CEO of Spartan Nash. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.